Praise the Lord, boys and girls. Hi, I'm Sister Sylvie, and I will be teaching Sunday school today for grace three through fifth. So glad to see each and every one of you, even though it's virtually. I hope everyone is doing well. I know most of you have moved up to a different grade. So when we see you again, you may not be in our class, but I wanted to let you know that all the Sunday school teachers in the youth department miss you guys and can't wait to meet with you again. But in the meantime, we'll be doing Sunday school for you virtually. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord God, we praise you. We thank you. We honor you. We glorify and magnify you, Lord Jesus, because you're worthy to be praised, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness and mercy and your kindness you bestow on us. Lord Jesus, we pray for the students who are watching, those who attend our church, and those who do not, Lord God, bless them, help them to receive the word, apply the word and share the word. We pray for parents who are making decisions on whether to send their kid back to school or not. During this time, Lord God, give them wisdom on what to do for their children. Lord God, we pray for the pastor, those who work at the church, Lord Jesus, the volunteers, cover them. We pray for people who have been exposed to COVID-19, uh, who've lost family members, who have people who are ill, Lord God, bless them in a special way, Lord Jesus, give them extra grace and mercy. We pray for healing in Jesus' name, Lord God. Uh, we pray for all the essential workers in all the different departments around uh, all the jobs, Lord Jesus, those who have to go out daily and, and take care of people in hospitals and those who work in stores and in other type of jobs that I might have missed, those who do their job to take care of us, Lord God, bless them in a special, special way. We honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. But all right, let's get started with our lesson. The title of our lesson today, The Pursuit of Wisdom. Our lesson is found in James chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. And we'll be reading from the ERV version, which is called the Easy Read version. Let's get started with our introduction and background. Think about this. Think about what life might be like if you had to move suddenly and migrate to a new place where the people don't necessarily like you or your Christian beliefs. James, the brother of Jesus, wrote the Bible book of James as a letter mostly to Jewish Christians who had been scattered from their home country because of persecution for who they were and what they believed. James wrote to encourage and strengthen them to become wise, mature believers, and to persevere, not to quit when things got hard. We're gonna to start today with our present day lesson. The title of our present day lesson is Faith and Wisdom. Faith and Wisdom. Let's get going. Jessica was so excited about an art class being offered at the community center in her neighborhood. She loved using art material in the class. She had never created anything with clay and was fascinated by the pottery lesson that her teacher was teaching them today. Miss March showed them how to take a lump of clay and mold it into a usable or decorative piece on the pottery wheel. That was the first day. Next, the piece went into a hot oven called a kiln. Once it came out of the oven, a glaze or color was placed on it, and then it went back in the oven to finish. Jessica decided that she was going to make a colorful bowl. She shaped it on the wheel, but was very nervous about putting it in the kiln. She didn't like the idea of her bowl going into a hot oven, so she skipped that step. Her pottery piece was dull and weak, while her classmates were shiny and sturdy. Miss March noticed and said, Jessica, I don't remember you giving me a bowl to put in the kiln. Jessica explained that she was nervous and she thought the kiln would destroy her bowl. Miss March explained that the kiln, which is an oven, did, the, did just the opposite. The oven would harden the clay and make the glaze color bright and shiny. Jessica asked if she could try it again and Miss March agreed. This time, Jessica didn't miss any steps. It took her longer to finish, but when she was done, her piece was more beautiful than she could imagine. 
let's look at some questions regarding Jessica and what, what happened in the pottery class. Why was Jessica afraid to put her pottery in the oven? That's right. She thought the oven would destroy it. What was the difference between her first piece and her second piece? Right, her first piece was dull and, and not sturdy, but her second piece was beautiful and sturdy and colorful. How did the kiln help the piece Jessica made? That's right, the heat from the oven made it sturdy and the heat from the oven made the colors come out. Wow, so being under pressure actually made the piece more beautiful than when it wasn't under pressure or trouble or fire. Let's keep that in mind as we go into our Bible lesson on today. And again, our Bible lesson comes from James chapter one, verses one through 11. And we're gonna start with verses one through three. Verse one, reading from James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to God's people who are scattered all over the world. My brothers and sisters, you will have many kinds of trouble, but this gives you a reason to be very happy. You know, when your faith is tested, you will learn to be patient in suffering. So James is saying here, when you go through trouble, you should be very happy. Let's talk about that. What is he saying? Well, let's connect it to our present day lesson. Jessica was afraid to put her clay bowl in the fire because she thought it would destroy it. But the fire did the exact opposite. It made it strong and shiny. Trouble is like that in our lives. It helps us to grow and mature as a Christian. The Bible in 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, yes, you will suffer for a short time, but after that, God will make everything right. He will make you strong. He will support you and keep you from falling. He is God who gives you grace. He chose you to share in his glory in Christ. That glory continues forever. Trouble comes to help mature us as Christians. During trouble, we get closer to God through his word and prayer. We are to go through with joy knowing it's going to work out for our good. So good trouble. Trouble makes us closer to God. It matures us. Let's continue. Verse 4. If you let that patience work in you, the end result will be good. You will be mature and complete. You will be all that God wants you to be. Put into practice all the things that you've been taught in Sunday school and search the word and ask God for direction. It teaches us how to endure with patience. God is developing us. God is making us stronger. And when we go through with joy and you, you will be a stronger Christian and God's glory will be shining through you. Just like the pottery, when it went through the fire, it came out shiny. God's glory will be shining through you when you go through with patience and joy. Let's continue, verse five. Do you need wisdom? Ask God for it. He is generous and enjoys giving, giving to everyone, so he will give you wisdom. God wants you to ask him for wisdom to know how to face the challenges that you have. He is eager to give it to you and to show you what to do, but you have to ask him. He will give it to you, but you have to ask and trust him and nothing else and no one else. Let's continue. Verse six, but when you ask God, you must believe. Don't doubt him. Whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea that is blown up and down by the wind seven and eight people like that are thinking two different things at the same time they can never decide what to do so they should not think they will receive anything from the lord but we can't be double-minded not going back and forth between believing god and not believing god jessica in the story was given instructions on how to create a bowl through pottery but she didn't trust the process 
she didn't believe it would work for her because she was afraid. And her first attempt at making the bowl was a disaster. She doubted. God does not want us to doubt him. You must trust him. You can't receive if you don't believe. Let me say that again. You must trust him. You can't receive if you don't believe. Psalms 119 and 113 says, the double-minded I despise, but your law I love. In the King James Version of James 1 and 8, it says this, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now think about it. Things that unstable fall apart. They break. They're not useful. Nobody wants to sit on an unstable chair or or eat their dinner on an unstable table because you know it's, it's chances are it's going to fall and break while you're trying to sit or while you're trying to eat. That's not good. That is not how God wants us to be. He does not want us to be unstable. He wants us to trust him and not be double-minded. Let's continue. Verses 9 through 11. Believers who are poor should be glad that God considers them so important. Believers who are rich should be glad when bad things happen that humble them. Their riches won't keep them from disappearing as quickly as wildflowers. Verse 11, as the sun rises and gets hotter, its heat dries up the plants and the flowers fall off. The flowers that were so beautiful are now dead. That's how it is with the rich. While they are still making plans for their businesses, they will die. James is telling us here, let the poor believers know they're spiritually rich as they trust in God and know he's their source. The rich, when they are humble, when bad things happen to them, they realize that the things have no meaning. They mean nothing and it, things can't help them. They learn that their trust should be in the Lord, not in things. Their wealth does not bring them closer to God. Things fade away, but God never fades away. Focus in on serving him, not things or money, which cannot save you. It doesn't mean that you can't be rich. It just means that you should not be focused on your riches. You should realize that your source for all things is God and riches will fade away. First Timothy 6 and 17 says, God commands to those who are rich with the things of the world, tell them not to be proud, tell them to hope in God, not in their money. Money cannot be trusted but God takes care of us richly. He gives us everything we need. So let's go over the key points from our lessons today. Key learning points. Know when you go through hard times, God is giving you an opportunity to grow and mature in him. Next, ask God for wisdom on how to go through challenges and he will freely give it. I'm going to say that again. Ask God for wisdom on how to go through challenges and he will freely give it. He will tell you what to do. He'll tell you who to talk to. He'll, he'll give you direction, but you have to ask him. And last key learning point, trust God over riches or things that you have. Only he can help you. Riches and things fade away, but God does not fade away. All right, here's your activity for this week. To stay focused as you face problems, look up the following scriptures this week for strength and encouragement. Isaiah 41, 13, 1 Peter 5 and 10, Romans 8, 35, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, Romans 8 and 18. You can look it up in the Easy Read version, the King James version, and talk about it with your family as well. Talk about the scriptures and how they provide encouragement and strength. Also, think about areas in your life where you're double-minded, where you go back and forth between believing God and doubting. I think we all have areas in our life like that. Pray and ask God to help you trust him and let him guide you through those challenges. Well, that's the end of our lesson. If you'd like to be baptized, please call us here at the Apostolic Faith Church, 773 373-8500. At this time, let's go before the Lord in a closing prayer. Dear Lord God, we praise you and thank you for on the lesson today, Lord God. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are there for us to give us wisdom, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that you said come to you, Lord Jesus, because you give it freely, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word to help us, Lord Jesus, to live our lives, to reflect you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for letting us know as we go through trouble, Lord God, that we grow and mature as Christians when we go through the right way, Lord Jesus. Help us to go through the right way with joy, Lord Jesus, clinging to you and not to our own thoughts and ideals, Lord God. We pray for each and every student on today, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord Jesus, and help us, Lord God, to reflect you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, bye-bye. See you next time in Sunday school.